Welcome, Chief. Welcome, Deputy. Good evening. Gentlemen. Madam um, Chair, if I might just uh, move the... Uh, what I want to do is hit rolling stock first. All right. So rolling we don't forget stock. it at okay. the end. Okay. And we've got a lot of stock. stuff. Can you put roller blades? Be careful. Let me like you, <laughs> Be careful, <laughs> Tim. In the back of the budget, you've got your rolling stock. Just one is it. you remember? And I know I have a couple of questions. It's under Appendix no, it doesn't yet. E. Yeah. Appendix E. Okay, I'm real Thank you. Now, you haven't put here what the fire chief put, showing poor, excellent, whatever. So maybe you could give us a little guidance. Yeah, I, think I flagged that... some of the vehicles. Number 304, the 2007 Crown Vic. <laughs> Is that <laughs> coughing and sputtering? or? Um, actually, that's not too bad what you find. That's a 2007 Crown Vic. That's an admin vehicle. What you find with the admin vehicles is fewer drivers means yeah. better wear and tear on the vehicle. But what you find out with our admin vehicles is, in my career with Hampton PD, I've seen four vehicles that were admin vehicles that don't get the current, they don't get the mileage as quick. Yeah. The frames rust because of the salt air environment. So I've seen four of them because of the frames uh, go out of service because of that issue. So that car is in fairly decent shape. Uh, but I think that's one of the ones we're uh, planning on removing from our inventory. Okay. Here, either this year, at the end of this year, or the beginning of next. And you got your two new vehicles, the Ford Explorer. <coughs> just got them. I think I, I watched you the other night, and those are the new new. Uh, three new ones just came in. Um, that was part of the 16 budget. Oh, there it is on the. Yeah, bottom. we we took a different track. Usually, we have the budgets in uh, the uh, vehicles in during the summer, and uh, we tend to get. Kid, we had a great idea. When we do that in the summertime, we tie up a vehicle for a few days with a changeover because you have, you have to change over the um, right. all the components of the vehicle you're getting rid of, right. and that can take a couple of days. And in the middle of the summer, where we're busy with operations and detail, that really limits our vehicle fleet. So we decided to place the order later in the year, put the vehicles in later in the year, so it keeps the summer miles off. Yeah. And the transition is, doesn't impact the operation as much. So. And you got 2016s rather than 2017s because you got a little break, I hope, maybe? Uh, I think break. actually we got the 17s. Uh, and I don't think there was 20... much of a change in price. I could be wrong on that, though. I'm seeing the new ones. 2016s. On the new ones? Well, I don't see new ones if they're not. Yeah, they literally just came in just before they were purchased. Just, yeah. uh, the rolling stock you have is prior to those coming in. Okay, right. so the, one, the new ones that came in replaced what? Uh, they haven't been replaced yet because we're still in the middle of the transition, so I can't... Well, I know, but what what units will they be replaced? I would say it's probably your higher mileage cars, the um, 318, 318, which is your parking enforcement vehicle, okay. which has 113,000 miles on Pretty sure that's okay. one of the one that's going right out the door. And just for future reference, I want to see what you're getting rid of. Yep. Uh, well, that's kind of a fluid decision, though. We're looking at the necessity of vehicles. Still working on it? Okay. Well, it's one of those things. When we get under a vehicle we look, we may say, you know, this one's in better shape than that one, okay. so let's keep this one, even though it's got a few more miles. Okay. We'll stay tuned. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to figure out what you got. No, that's a good question. And your ATVs look pretty decent, I guess, because it doesn't um, say poor or anything. No, they're pretty well kept up. Uh, they utilize them quite a bit, but they're required to also clean them off every time they bring them in. You uh, got your trailers. And on the bottom... Those ATVs are used exclusively for the beat patrol, right? Um, no. I would say 99%. There are those opportunities where we may have to go somewhere. I can't recall any recently, but you know, we have the rail bed now out there. That's uh, yeah. we, If we have to get out there, that we use that or into White's Lane, we use those. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember a recent history where we've done that, but I know in the past we have. So I'd say 99% is down at the beach. Okay, good. And then at the bottom, the variable message, those are the uh, messages. Big orange, ugly things that are all rusting. Yes, those okay. are the So it, it looks good. It doesn't look like anything is falling apart. I don't see it. We're any. a little different than the fire department. Yeah. They, they hold on to their vehicles a lot longer because of the size and the, obviously the cost, and they, they're able to house those yeah. uh, in covered facilities where Oz are a little bit more exposed. So you get about, on average, three years out of a patrol vehicle. Okay, so I just wanted to review that. It doesn't look like anything terrible, and you're taking care of the new vehicles that you managed to purchase before the end of this year, but they will be 2017. 
I don't know if the manufacturer date is 17 or 16, but, but they're, they're, part of the, they're part of the 16 budget. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I can move the police administration for 500, Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. $8. No, you're getting way ahead of the thing here. Animal control is next. No, no, no. No, no, no animal control no, comes no. after me and then... Uh, no, no, no. We did rolling stock. And then we got animal control, which is a no-brainer. And it comes under the police department. <coughs> What? Police administration is my motion for five hundred two thousand eight hundred fourteen dollars. I will second that. Yeah, animal control, ma'am, comes under Health and Human Services. It's actually a separate budget from the police. We separated that a few years back. We held this. Services. I don't know. We're going to do it tonight. Okay, afterwards. we'll do it tonight. But After we don't we do want to forget budget. the animals. We, I won't let you forget. All right. Okay. <laughs> you got to be good to Peter. Okay. So the motion is. You have the number, Barbara. Five zero two eight one four. Administration, gasoline, the dreaded gasoline. Now, it doesn't have a price, but I'm assuming, uh, Mr. Sullivan, that that's a $195 as well. It was factored in at $195 like the fire. They're all the same. Yes, They're all the same. Okay. And plain gasoline, not diesel. Do you use diesel? The only way we use diesel in is in our white towers. The, uh, variable, oh, uh, the white okay, towers gotcha. are diesel powered. Gotcha. Not building generator. Okay. Now, questions on this section of the budget. Training and recruitment, rentals and leases, all that stuff. I have a couple of questions if nobody else does. Okay, regular wages. You all got your sheet from July when the selectmen made their um, gave out their increases for non-union. Um, 10 percent for the chief, which was an extra 10,000. Deputy chief and administrative assistant, 5 percent each. I didn't see any raises other than the standard 2 percent for the fire chief. Public Works Director for the uh, Director of Parks and Recreation, who is the longest serving. I'm sure. Yes. The Board of Selectmen made a singular motion to increase. I, I know they did, said. but I'm I'm trying to figure out what was unique here that resulted in higher wage increases than in the other non-union personnel. I think well, it's a valid question. The, the biggest chunk was the police chief's raise of $10,000, which was a singular motion made in July. Which ba it backdated to April 1st. By the Board of Selectmen. Yes. And, and so, uh, and, and they said that uh, they were basing that on some analysis that the assistant time manager had done about salary competitiveness, I believe, or something to that effect. That's correct. But I guess the assistant time manager could speak more intelligent than that, because I don't know anything more than that. Go ahead. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah. Yes, so far everything you said is accurate. Yes, the Board of Selectmen have adjusted these wages based on an analysis that was presented to them. Um, they intend to adjust some other wages to the 17 budget that are in the merit line or in that adjustment line. Right. But yes, that's, that's what the Board did. But what was unique about this department, <coughs> because all of the other non-union individuals received 2%. So that's what I'm trying to get at. I'd just like to understand where this came from. I did watch that meeting. Sure. So, Board of Selectmen chose, that when I did my analysis, that yes. I presented to the board, there were several positions, a number of positions of the non-unions that appeared to be, uh, based on my comparativeness, uh, either substantially below or below. And the board decided to address three of those in July, to address three more in the 2017 budget. So what they did was, in general, across the board to non-unions, right. they did a 2% Except the building uh, right. inspector, right. There were three others that they did, the chief, the deputy, and the administrative assistant. Correct. For what you've described. Right. And then in addition, there were a couple of others. There was uh, in a contract one that I think was 5% off the top of my head for the deputy director of DPW, but that was part of her yeah. initial hiring documentation. Right. And that's what the board voted for this year. Later in the year, they voted to adjust the town manager's salary and my salary. But right. Those are what you've discussed so far tonight. So the uh, ten thousand dollar raise, the uh, 
police chief receives, and we're dealing with the police budget only, so. Right. Um, the 2% non-union wage, did he also no. get a kick in that? Those that so he had a singular wage. increment of $10,000 and that's it, nothing else? Those that receive a wage adjustment, as described, did not get the double. They didn't get that plus one or the other you got. Right, so he got a singular increment, it was $10,000 flat. Okay. Uh, Actually, that's, it was a I think a percentage. It was 10,000 flat. That's correct. The other percentage. Yes. That's on the list that so we received. It's like 9.73, technically, is what it is. Exactly what it is, yeah. 9.73. Yeah. We're looking at, we're looking at a, a budget that says 4.5% increase in regular wages under police administration, right? And that 4.5% is based on the budget, not on the actuals. Is that right, Christy? So, I mean, there's been. Am I to understand that, that that's simply uh, a meaningless number to us? Because you increase the pay in the case of the chief, you also increase the deputy, I believe, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. But I'm picking on the chief because he's the chief. <laughs> and he's got the bigger number. But <laughs> just for simplicity's sake, uh, we increased him by $10,000. And of course, that's going to flow into next year. Yes. Okay. And the same with the deputy chief and others. Yeah. And so that raise that was done in 2016, this year, would actually, could actually have caused this 4% increase in the 2017 budget, right? Yes. Yes. Right. So that means there's no uh, wage increases for the chief or anyone else in the in police administration for a raise in 2017, correct? No. That is not no, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, again, you have two separate things. In this line item, what you're looking at is what is the wage, what's the wage before any adjustment in 2017? Right. So that's what that number is. That 4%, 4 percent, 4.5 you're seeing is the increase of that line item as comparison to the last year. In 2016. Right. The so, increase what, to answer your question, as we spoke earlier, the current Board of Selectmen has authorized to a 2% wage adjustment and there are three other positions identified to have a larger than 2% wage adjustment as a part of that analysis from before. But the point is, is that he, he, there is no targeted raises here. No, I want to be very clear on something. When you look at the breakdown, what's in administration? Um, it's the chief, the deputy chief. The administrative system. The administrative system, but it also includes the prosecutor. Right. So the prosecutor right. is a union employee, right. so and if you recall last year, Right, we're only talking non-union here, though. I know, but you're talking about administration line, though, and he's included in the administration line as far as salary. So you will okay. see a contractual raise uh, based on... You know what the, that number is? Uh, off the, I think it's 3% it off the top of my head, but don't also remember there's also step raises. I don't know if Sergeant Reno would be doing a step this year or not, but there'll definitely be a 3% to Sergeant Reno based on the contract. It was so in, in, in 2017, there are no targeted raises for non-union in police administration, is that an accurate statement? On that regular police line, administration, yes. this line item, that is correct. Thank you. Take it away, Steve. Uh, okay, I have some questions additionally. I looked through the 2015 annual report which does have a listing of all the uh, salaries and all the employees. And I noticed something that I hadn't really paid much attention to previously. And that is, let's see, in 1997, the then Board of Selectmen made an adjustment in the police department because the police department was restructured. And from lieutenant on up, the positions were salaried. I am seeing overtime charges and funds and grants being charged to the chief of this department, and I'm wondering how that fits in. So you, when I went back and looked at you and your service as chief of police, there were a couple of overtime entries, but there was very little by way of anything other than your flat salary. Well, I went back. Now, I'm looking for 2015, 
at a salary of 107,785. That was before the adjustment that we just discussed. Uh, funds and grants 7,394 and overtime 4,820 dollars. I'm just curious as to how this is translating because I'm not accustomed to seeing the chief's position as other than salaried and the deputy and same thing for the other departments. I mean, you, you made a statement earlier that the lieutenants were no salary. That's not accurate. They're not only employees. They have all the time. They do other things. Your issue of what you're talking about for the deputy chief and the chief are straight salary positions. Right. Okay, they're exempted positions. Right. And yes, they very rarely, I very rarely work some of those. Correct. True. Yeah, I very rarely did. This chief works more of them. Yes. You're eligible to. If there's availability and they're open, you're available to do so. If I might, ma'am, it's, it's a very common practice. You'll see chiefs throughout the area that work details. Um, I knew this was an issue that you might be concerned with, and I checked, and it's, it's a very common thing for chiefs to work. I probably work more hours than most of the ones on the seacoast, but then again, I think we also probably have more need for it with the number of events we run down here. We are event central. I think a lot of the things you see me working are, are those type of things. Um, is this detracting from the ability of the part-time special officers to earn? Very clearly, I want to make this clear. Well, I thought uh, I'd ask. By contract, mm -hmm. the work has to, most of the work that we have has to be offered to <coughs> the members first, which, is, which includes the special officers. Yes. The only ones that wouldn't be is if we have a large event, such as the Seafood Festival, right. where we require a command officer to be present during the operation, those are specifically for command people. Right. But in those bigger events, frequently we can't fill them anyhow, and they wind up going to outside agencies anyhow. So mm -hmm. in a short sum, though, if there's a road job for somebody to work, the last people that are eligible to work that, unlike other agencies, is the command staff. You go to Salem right. PD, chief of police gets first call, deputy chief, and down the road. So we do it inversely. A first-year part-time officer gets a crack at work. Uh, that extra work. So you're first us. working off the union call list? Yes. Okay. Um, how many members of the Hampton Police Department, to the best of your knowledge, work details in other communities? I would have to do an assessment for that because, again, we're reciprocal with other agencies. Um, so if we have an event down here, the Lodge Road Racial or the Seafood Festival, We'll call UNH, Seabrook, the other agencies that we work with, and conversely, I know the last couple of weeks we've been working a lot in Seabrook. It really depends where the work is at that given moment. Some years, the gas company was working in Hampton for the last two years a lot. Now there's a lot of road work down on the area of 107 down in Seabrook, so you'll see our officers down there working. To say how much we're working elsewhere, I, I really don't have an answer off the top of my head on that. As head of the department, do you feel that it inhibits your ability to manage the department by taking details or whatever? No, I'm very careful about how I do that. I think you'll find uh, the details that I take are on weekends when I'm not normally working or during the evening hours. Now, my schedule is flexible. I adjust it to attend meetings such as this, mm -hmm. whatever I have to do. But I try not to take any type of extra work. I had the opportunity uh, Monday before the election. The University of New Hampshire was desperately looking for officers to come up as they were experiencing a presidential visit. Uh, they asked if I would come up. Uh, they are very fond of the Hampton Police Department coming up there because of our, our ex expertise in dealing with crowd control situations. I determined that that wasn't uh, appropriate for me to do. I had other things going on in town. I had some meeting stuff that I had to attend, so I declined to take that work. And that's normally my practice. I, I can't think of a time I've taken a detail Monday through Friday where I would normally be in my office working, primarily evenings and uh, weekends. So you coordinate with Deputy Hobbs if you're going to be out of town or he's going to be out of town, vice versa. There's one of you there to respond to whatever might be happening in town. I wouldn't say just out of town. I'd say out of the area. Uh, the area. If I'm going to go... Uh, Say I'm going to UNH. I don't feel that that's that far out of the area. He generally knows where I am. Well, that's what I'm. Yeah. Okay. Generally, we speak. So you two are coordinating. 
as much as we can. Okay. Okay. I know I've sidetracked you, but I had questions, and so I. I, asked I have a question. Sure. Yes. You said you're a salaried employee. Yes. So if you're salaried, how can you collect overtime? I'm lost in that. It's generally not general nature for not my. It's said when we work for a an outside source of money, being a private vendor in an event. Or if it's a grant, like the Seacoast Festival. Seacoast Festival is paid for by the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things we've done, I think we've done very well, is saving money to the taxpayer as far as providing police officers for special events. We really can't do that. A, we don't have the people to do it and the funding to do it. So when you want to run a special event in Hampton, and there are many, you have to sit down with us, fire department, and in public works to determine what's the safest thing to do. And we determine what the public safety needs are. Those things are then billed to the private entity for the rate of pay, for the detail rate, and our rate of pay is $35 an hour or the officer's overtime rate, whichever is greater. Then there's a 30% charge on top of that for administrative things such as insurance costs and retirement costs. And we also charge a fee, I think it's $14 an hour if you utilize a person. So that's the revenue stream for that Fund 26 we were talking about earlier. So those are considered by, I believe, IRS. Uh, Christy, you probably answer this better. It's not considered overtime. It's a separate entity in itself. If that's so it's not being paid by the Hampton taxpayers. It's being the taxpayers. Tax seafood festival. Right. When I, Hampton, if right? I work a detail, I'm paid by the town, but then the town is reimbursed by that entity plus the 30 percent. Sunny? When I see the the flashing blue lights from the construction site, doesn't the battery run down or are they running their engine? They'll be running their engine. They're run oh, so yeah. that's driving up the cost of gas then. Huh? Well, you're getting 30% again. I don't know if you heard that. That's for you to <coughs> when you, you Well, no, the 30, you get the 30%, but also if you have a cruiser, you get $14 an hour more if we utilize a cruiser. That's what I always wondered. Cause no. Good question. Right. Okay, Mr. Pierce. Uh, when you go up to Durham, is that a detail rate? Yes. The, the university reimburses the town? University um, has been, uh, we went up for an early season meeting. The university, this is I think their 150th year, they're celebrating a big anniversary. So all of their events, they're doubling up uh, their police coverage, plus they are a hotbed of political activity in an election year. So our officers are going up there very frequently. We have six officers going up on Saturday night for an event. Um, and they're trying to utilize agencies like Hampton and Laconia that are used to dealing with crowd control situations. So they do pay us for it, then? Yes, they do. Okay. Plus the 30%. Thank you. That is my question. I have a question. Tim? Oh, I'm sorry. I just Go have ahead. a quick one. Um, for something like this event, um, does the horse earn any pay? Do you want to send the horse up there? There, no, I, I don't, we really haven't gone out of town with the horses in a while. Um, the last time, I mean, a lot of people remember we were up there back in 2004 when we had the, you know, anticipating, uh, UNH was in the finals and back then the sports riots were a big thing. They were going across nationally and we had a sports riot. Uh, the, the amount that was very effective at that time. Uh, but I can't recall us going to a special event like that at the request. Now, the Mounted will use them in the town of Stratum, celebrated a big birthday. They asked for them to be in, the, in, the, uh, in their parade, so I did not bill them for that. I just want that as a cost of just mutual aid. Mm -hmm. That's more as a mutual aid situation. But if, there's an, if there was an issue where somebody needed for crowd control, we would send them, but we would bill, like, although. Considering we charge $14 an hour for the car, I don't know what I would charge for the horse. We might have to come up with a, a formula for that. I don't know. I just didn't know because it's something that... I'd be happy if they clean up the pool, but we don't have to. A rent a horse fee. The yeah, we'd have to. That's one I haven't had, so that's a good question. Maybe a training place for him as yep. well, or an officer. Yep. Thank you. Sonny? Another question. The special detail rates the same from town to town? The no, they vary because uh, keep in mind where we, we live in a mixed area. We live in a mixed area of, of uh, union shops and non union shops. So, one of the, you know, we utilize Sheberk a lot. They're right next door. They work with us. So, I always try to give them first, them and UNH first crack of the work. Now, they have collective bargaining agreements with their particular entities. So, it's governed by that. So, if we work somewhere else, like if we go to Sheberk, 
we charge them based upon our rate. If Steve comes to Hampton and work, they charge based on their rate, and that's the agreement. Because if we try to get a Seabrook officer to accept the pay that Hampton has, it may be different than his contract. So yeah. to avoid any union conflicts amongst the agencies, we've just all agreed that Hampton charges Hampton rate, Seabrook charges Seabrook rate, and that way I don't get involved with any of the billing or any of the issues that if a Seabrook officer comes to Hampton. Uh, Seafood Fest paid, I believe, six different law enforcement agencies yeah. for the details to cover that three-day event. They all sent separate bills, Rockingham Sheriff, State Police, um, Seabrook, and any of the other agencies that work, they send a separate bill to the vendor, just like it happened in their town. It's just cleaner and easier because that would be impossible for finance to track that if we did it any other way. All set? All worked up here? No. No, Mr. Jones. Chief, uh, you got a 10% increase, 10.11% increase in overtime wages. And since you're the deputy, your de salary obviously doesn't apply to you as specified mm -hmm. on page 29, or excuse me, page 20, for those who are playing the budget committee at home. Yep. Yep. So you've got overtime for administrative personnel, summer, prosecutor support. And some other thing about computer development and repair. Mm -hmm. How much computer development and repair charges occurred in this line item last year? Specifically to that portion of it, I can't answer that off the top of my head. Basically, we've taken a couple of officers. Uh, as you remember, Lieutenant Gaditis does the primary work on our computer system. But he can't be there 24-7. He goes on vacation. He's not out there at midnight. So we've trained up a couple of officers that if he's not available, and a lot of times it happens on shift, sometimes it doesn't. Somebody has to come in and reset the reboot the computers and reset things that fail down in dispatch. And that, uh, I believe, is the crux of that money. How much is spent specifically on that? It's got to be rather small. I mean, to reboot I, well, a computer, it's, it's, small, it's a small five item. Five minutes to push the button. You know? 5347 no. to I'm do. the wrong guy to ask about. I think we've had this discussion. Yeah. I'm not the guy to ask about computers. <laughs> <laughs> but 5347 Tim, to date in that line. Thank you. Well, but right it, on the cover sheet. It's a 10% increase from last year. I'm wondering how you calculated a 10% mm -hmm. increase. Last well, keep in mind, though, it didn't come from the, the notation on computer development and repair. It came apparently from overtime for administrative personnel. Yeah. Well, I think I've touched on that. Sergeant Reno, as far as prosecution mm -hmm. goes, got a 3% raise uh, based on the contract that, in 16. That, okay. 3% raise coming in 17, okay. which is this budget, plus any step he may have done. Uh -huh. But also, when you look at the computer stuff, those officers that worked at also, 3 3, whatever step raise they got. So that would incorporate that increase. Have we, Could we get some visibility on on that uh, notation? Um, pushing the button, how much that costs when we need to use the computers? The officer's overtime rate. Right. I mean, uh, how often is. is that done and that kind of thing? I could try to find out. Yeah, uh, I appreciate how often that. Because I'll, I'll take a look at that at final review, maybe. Okay. You know, so I'd rather you know just say, yeah, it's, it's cool. I looked at the background and it's okay. But right now it's kind of a black thing, you know, black box. Right. Um, the, uh, now you get you get an automobile for 24-7 access. Yes, correct. And your deputy does as well? Yes. Okay. And the town policy has you having access to that to go wherever 24-7 uh, because we expect you to be available 24-7. Correct. Right. And so, if you're on detail out of town, then you're not available. No. You're right, inaccurate. Oh. So, you're going to run away from the detail and you're going to come into town? It's happened. So, that will happen. That will occur. We had a, we were up at UNH. You know, I don't need an example. I just want to know well, no, that, you that, asked will the question. that will occur, right? It has happened. I'd like to hear the example. We were up That's at a uh, concert up at the Whittemore Center back last spring. And we had an incident occur where we believed we were going to have an activation of the tactical team, which I also serve as president of. A number of the officers there were part of the team, were on the detail. I let the captain know at UNH that I had an incident occurring, that I had to relieve the several officers to return. And then I shortly after I felt it was safe there that they had adequate staffing there, I left and came back and handled the incident. So that has occurred. So there was a delay in getting back. 
while you're waiting for staff to Well, it's a, bit of, it's a bit of a drive from Durham here, yeah, but that was the delay. Well, that's the reason why we give you a car 24-7, so that there will be no delay in you getting transportation right. to so get I, where I you guess them, get. I guess them. That's my understanding of why you have the 24-7 car. Well, if you use your model, then apparently Not I... my model. I think that's a selectman from years ago decided the chief and the deputy chief need a car because they have to be on call and on scene, lickety-split when we need them. That was, that was the reason so why. how do we handle it, Tim, when I'm out of town on personal business? Am I now restricted to the boundaries of the town of Hampton? No, I think that okay. vacation time and sick time is... Is Training. implicitly excluded from that. Training. Training, of course, is part of your function, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So you but need... driving income from a secondary source, I don't think that is implicit. Well, mutual aid helping out. Well, mutual aid is mutual different aid than, is than, not than private than... details, Brian. Okay. Sonny? Yeah. I've got a couple of Sorry, am I, am I confused on this? Wait one second. I think on a When I say, look, at, I'm, okay with, I'm okay with the chief doing police details, mm -hmm. I'm okay with the deputy chief doing police details. As long as they're like still available to be on scene, like they split. So I don't expect the chief to go do a police detail in Las Vegas, for example. I have two. Well, that doesn't get you on scene. That's no, but most of the things I do, okay. The phone does not get you on scene. No, it doesn't, Tim. I agree with you, okay. But a lot of what I do is this, okay. I could be in Epping. We've been called out five times by the tactical team in the last eight weeks. Okay, so I'm all over the place, frequently, okay? We still have the town of Hampton to protect, okay? So would, would you advocate that we cancel mutual aid with other communities and that we don't be part of the Seacoast Emergency Response Team? Because that's kind of where you're going with it. No, it's not. I said, I, like I, I, no, I said deriving income from a secondary source. You do not derive income uh, from a mutual aid activity. Okay. Right? So I wasn't referring to that at all. Well, I consider the details also mutual aid because... Well, they're not. Well, I, I think the chiefs of police would disagree. If they, if they were mutual aid, then you wouldn't be driving any income from the activity. Not necessarily. That's not true. Private details are private details. Tim, you're missing the point. You're, you're so missing the point. So, so when, when... When we call on the Seacoast emergency... When I have a private party... Am I going to be allowed to speak? When I have a private party... Apparently not. When, when I have a private party and I and I... Hire a police detail. Okay. Is that mutual aid? That policeman that shows up to my house at my party is—is is he performing mutual aid? I think that's a question. That is, that's a question that's not even worthy of a response to. You know, right? Because it's that. a private detail. Private detail and mutual aid are not the same thing. They're not interchangeable. Oh, and sometimes they are. Please explain. University of New Hampshire, when they have a major event, or when the town of Hampton has a major event, and we can't fulfill what we need to provide for public safety, okay, I can't extend a private detail to an entity I don't have mutual aid with. So how you can sit there and claim that isn't the fact flies in the face of the law. I can't extend a private detail to a police agency that I don't have mutual aid with. So how you can sit there and say that they're not somehow related is just beyond my comprehension. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't say there's not a relationship between the entities. I think you did. I said there's not a relationship between the two activities. Mutual aid is an activity that's taking place at our expense because we, in fact, when we go help out Seabrook, mm -hmm. right, we don't send a bill to Seabrook because we also know that they'll come and help us out and they won't send a bill to us. That's mutual aid, right? Yeah. But it's also in those circumstances where details have to be paid yeah. because I cannot, I cannot invite in Seabrook PD to work an event in Hampton or the University of New Hampshire unless I have a mutual aid with them. So but to, to try to claim they're mutually exclusive is inaccurate. The activity itself is either a private detail or it's mutual aid. Right? No, sometimes it's one and the same. Can we move oh, can be both. Along? No. Can be both. Oh, okay. I do have a oh. question before you move okay. along. And then, uh, it, started, then some, it started with the cruisers. So my question is, when you go to UNH, you drive the cruiser up to UNH? Yes. If your regular patrolmen have a detail at UNH, do they take a cruiser up to UNH? It would, depend, it would depend on what the need of the detail was. There are details sometimes that are traffic control that need a cruiser. 
so a cruiser would be sent and the in the uh, private vendor will be built for the cruiser mm -hmm. there's sometimes there are ones where you're just standing in the roadway it doesn't require a cruiser so they'll, they'll drive there in their own vehicle it depends on the different nature of the vehicle <laughs> as to whether that would happen or not thank you Sonny, Chair, could yeah. I go, could I ask for a wait, vote? Wait one second, because poor Sonny has yeah, been trying to do one follow-up, and then we're When the EMTs go out, they send a fire engine. Would it be cheaper to send a cruiser along? This is the fire, this, that's the fire department, Sonny. We're talking about the police now. In what area am I positive what you're asking? I'm sorry. I'm not quite sure what you're asking me. Oh, well, when the, when the ambulance goes out, a, a, fleet, a, fire, a fire truck goes out with it. That's operational it necessity. Yeah. Be, it would, what they say is in case they need the extra help. Okay. Now you're talking about just any private detail in town or out of town? If I had all those cars, yeah, I would agree. But uh, we have times here in the summertime where I could have eight or nine people on details. I can't take eight or nine cruisers to work details right. and deplete my workforce of the patrol function. So it all depends. Again, there's a lot of details where an officer can just stand in the intersection wearing a protective, you know, the, uh, the high-vis vest and not have to have a cruiser there. All right. so the other question I had was, you put a policeman in the schools. Have you had any in in incidents of, with it at all this year? Um, what? what do you mean? What kind of incidents? Hmm. I'm not sure, again, what you're asking. Oh, you have a, a policeman assigned to the schools. We have two. Have there been any, yeah, have there been any incidents? Yes, we've made arrests, yeah. investigations, mm -hmm. scares, all kinds of stuff happens at schools. Yeah. Yes. Is this high school and junior high? Or high school? It's the high school. There's one assigned to the uh, the middle school, but he also covers the other town schools. Okay. And they work frequently together. Okay, Mr. LeBranch is moving the question. I have a second to move the question. I'll second. second. Okay, well, let's just, just going to call for a vote. Are you just going to call for a vote? Okay. All right, we've got a motion. We've got a second. All right. And to move the question, hands? And, and a discussion. Wait a minute. Discussion before you can vote on it. So has to be right. a discussion on the motion. All right, go ahead. I just wanted to point out to people who are getting very impatient, Mr. LeBranch, that it's important to know We're getting lost why in the, the chief of police would be in Durham when he's on regular salary and he should be here according mm -hmm. to some people. That was the point. Was I think discussed. that may have got part of that resolved. Thank we, you. I think it was discussed. Thank you is right. Okay. okay. In favor of the motion to move the question. Okay. Unanimous. No, it isn't. I think. No. No. Okay. You are not in favor. Right. Jones is not in favor. Okay. Now the main motion. The first section, and we will get through it, $502,814 in favor of moving that forward to our final review. Okay, you know. Madam Chair, I'll move uh, Crime Control and Investigation, $553,265 to final review. I will second that. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Okay. You're welcome. 553265? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And seconded by Mr. LeBranch. You understand the intent of the motion? Mm -hmm. And you have your backup discussion. Gasoline is in there. Don't get excited. We're going to resolve all the gasoline uh, with Christy at our December first meeting. It's pretty clear cut. Consultants, uniform allowance, etc. In favor? of Mr. Jones' motion for Crime Control and Investigations 553265. I'm in favor, but I just want to make a comment about the gas. Oh, yeah. Gasoline, about, if I may. Uh, this is another example of where the actual and the requested don't seem to match up. You're, you're, you're more than doubling the nine-month usage, and that wouldn't quite work out, that, work out mathematically. It's got 16,000 so far this year, and you want nearly 35,500 for next year. So we'll not only question the cost of the gasoline, but we also have to question the ratio, the guide that they use to estimate the 2017 usage. 
Mm -hmm. so we'll be checking that when we go over right. the, the default budget. Madam Chair, I'd like to move traffic yeah. control. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, we, and we were unanimous. We were that. indeed. I, no, it's the that. second, yeah. please. The second on crime control. Branch. Brent LaBranch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Move traffic control and patrol for $2,085,970. I'll second that. And once again, the gasoline we'll do yeah. later on. Okay, regular wages, overtime, intoxilizer, et cetera. Questions on this account? And you have all of you backup information that the chief put together. The only thing that's up in this one is 4.34%, uh, and that's for regular wages, which I assume is really a derivative of the union contracts. So nothing to say here. Okay. Everybody comfortable with that? Yes. Uh, Account and that figure. In favor? Hands? There you go. Chair, I will training for the police. $35,174. I will second that. Okay. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. $35,174. Sorry, who's the second name? Steve. Yeah. Mr. We're trying to be consistent here. <laughs> <laughs> We're paying him as, for his services as a second. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, this training is up 16.19%, largely due to training, training and recruitment, which is up 22.2%. And I'm sure the Chief has a very brief explanation for that, right, Chief? I'm hoping, Tim. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the same place you are. <coughs> Recruitment is 8,100. I did add some uh, money for ammunition costs. They are going up. Uh, that's part of it. We increase the amount because we are shooting more. <laughs> and then we added. No, 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 no. <laughs> there was some weapons upgrades and repairs, some of the OC gas, and we uh, actually bought, based on what was going on earlier in the year, uh, we started doing some training dealing with um, civil disorder, or what we used to call it, riots. Starting to see things amp up. We had a pretty busy preseason, uh -huh. so some of that uh, was placed into that. I believe is those the person you're seeing. And we are now testing. No, pardon me. That's career development. The testing's in another location, so I don't want to use testing as my issue on that. So when you say shooting more, you mean shooting more target practice? Yes. Right. Training. <laughs> That way we don't shoot when we're not supposed to. I understand. I just wanted to be clear because for yep. some people thought maybe we were shooting more generally. No, no, no. We've been just target practice. We've been pretty good in that area. We've been doing pretty good in that And you said you were buying something other than bullets? Were you saying you are buying guns as well? Uh, no, just up. We, we actually had a great year last year. We wound up getting a uh, gun for gun swap on the ones that we were carrying. We were carrying guns that were, mm -hmm. we got back in the 90s. Um, so the only thing you're buying out of this is, is bullets, basically. Basically bullets and upkeep and equipment sometimes. Pieces will break and you have to upgrade things. Uh, sites will go, small things like that. When you put that in, those are all under training. It's odd. It would be under equipment repair in my mind. Well, you and I have had this discussion. But now we're going to talk I about radio maintenance soon, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime I have no problem sitting down talking to Tim and clarifying things, I agree with you. That there's, there's, we could do a better job yeah. clarifying. Uh, and I have to say that Christy has, has improved county visibility notably this year. Yes. Uh, this is one area that she hasn't gotten around to. It takes a long time to change this boat around, and I appreciate that. I just wanted to highlight that it's not necessarily all trained. The needle moves slower. Thank you very much, Chief. I'm happy, Madam Chair, I'm ready to vote. Mr. Steve, no, 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 no. question. No, no, no. Mr. Quick question. I'm sorry, I think we have a question over here. Just a quick one, believe oh. me. Under the ammunition, I, I, when I looked earlier, I thought I saw something like, you know, I think in a, a buckshot. Yeah, we don't use, we still have slugs in our inventory, but we also use. I was going to say, how we do. It's still in our inventory. It's still an option. Really? We haven't used buckshot in years. We've been using SWAT. If you carry shotguns, you use SWAT. You don't use buckshots anymore. Very rarely. And there's some crowd control applications also. Oh, if you should. Okay. Back. Steve, go ahead. Like using buckshot, no. <laughs> I just want to make a point that um, talking about training and recruitment. 
the budget for 2016 was $22,074, and actual so far this year is $51,721. Um, and of course, the Board of Selectmen suggested number is 26,974. And you mentioned something about additional training regarding uh, training for riots. I'm just going to well, obviously, we've, ex we've, ex yeah. ex we've, ex yeah. we've had a very contentious year politically. And, and I think that everybody should remember the motorcycle officer that was surrounded by 500 mm -hmm. uh, yeah. college-age students that was handled extremely well because yeah. of good training, mm -hmm. and so you're adding to that training, and that's perfectly acceptable. We entered into a uh, cooperative venture with the New Hampshire State Police to start getting the car crowd control training back to the point we had that we had so many people interested we had people coming down from as far away as Dunbarton yeah it's a national issue in law enforcement getting back to those basics of crowd control and there's, there's a lot more to it than people understand because you're incorporating a lot of things you're, you're incorporating not only the officer but using less lethal, less lethal force you're not you know you try to move a crowd but you're trying to do it with minimal injury and that isn't accomplished easily. If you, you know, I know Steve, you've seen me down there on the Fourth of July dealing with some of the hostility and some of the folks that don't want to cooperate with us. And, but the end result is that in the town of Hampton, because of that training, the results that are, that end up happening are come out very well. And it's and it's and it's because of your training. I believe that's true. It's hard to, sometimes to point to it, you know, a well, tangible thing. But when incidents don't occur, well, I'm going to declare victory. It was because of training. I would have to. I'd have to go in that direction. I mean, um, and just knock on wood. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Period. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Chief. Mm -hmm. Brian. Um, hiring the officers. Are we doing a fall class? I think that's going to come up in support. If you want to talk about that under that. Call. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have three quick things. Um, I noticed, and we went by it pretty quick, but you're spending the extravagant amount of $100 on prisoner food. So obviously you're not ordering from the finest restaurant. I, I can't remember the last time we actually had to dip into that. We keep that there just in case there's an incident, but generally we don't we don't like to keep prisoners around in the PD long because you the, get them out quick so you don't have to feed them. Usually it's about a four hour limitation because I don't want to keep the officer off the street. And if they know, a lot of times, obviously, we, we arrest a lot of people from other places that there's a distance before they can make bail. We try to give them every opportunity to make bail at Hampton, but if not, within usually a four hour window, we ship them west of the county jail and they can wait there. So there's not really a lot of opportunity where we have to buy food. I just want to keep $100 in there just in case. I, I just had to chuckle over yep. that. And I have learned since last year that live fire exercises for the fire department does not mean that the fire that the police department is shooting at the firefighters. We've I've thought about that. it um, on occasion, but no, we like those guys. Uh, we're trying to incorporate a lot of joint trainings with them. You'll be seeing some of that coming up next year with uh, some of the things we're doing, but trying to put them in a better protective state. That did state. present an interesting mental picture, however, <laughs> when I saw that notation. And anybody left, maybe Jimmy, who remembers the sand pits? Oh, sure. In Brentwood? Mm hmm When we started in the late 70s, firearms training. And I talked to a lot of the police officers there and the part-time officers, and some of them had never fired their weapon. And now, of course, we have our nice training ground in Hampton. But a lot of progress in a relatively short time. And, uh, I don't know. If they try to discontinue your training uh, area here. There's well, you may, you may we're not get too far ahead, but in the, in the future, we, it's something we're going to have to consider as a town to, to deal with that simply yeah. because the folks in that neighborhood are increasingly complaining walked, about the noise level, so we've, we've minimized it to the degree we can. We walked in that neighborhood yep. with the fire chief and the police chief and all the selectmen, and we went through Lane and all through there to explain to them the necessity of having that there, and I'm really proud of that, frankly. All righty, I think we've beaten this to death. Mr. Yeah. Pierce? Yeah, on the uniform allowance from May, with that back up a ways, um, you have motorcycle unit, four leather jackets, and uh, four riding boots. Is that um, something you buy every year? Sorry, we're, I thought we were on training. It, it depends. On, where are you, Mike? We're on training, Mike. Back we're on training, 35,174. 
Well, I wanted to ask a question. Make it back up a little bit. <laughs> I don't know the, if you can after you've already. The jackets and the, the jackets. I don't have no problem answering it. <laughs> jackets and the boots depend on whether you have the same officers year to year. How many people get the riding boots and the jackets? Oh, right up here. Looking good, John. Mike, what, were you talking line item forty nine hundred? Uniform uh, allowance. Yes, that's it. Okay, what specific item do you want to talk about? How many How many people do you have in the motorcycle unit that would require four each this year and four last year? Jackets that's and boots. Well, that's minimum, Mike, because you got wear and tear on the mo on the boots. Okay, yeah. they're a very specific boot you have to wear, mm -hmm. and because of the heat we, we're exposed to on the bike, but also in the environment we work in, I'm replacing boots uh, with some frequency. The jackets, not as much, but I'm getting very low on my uh, riders. I added four riders last year. If I can run a class of eight to ten, if I can find guys that are interested, I'm going to run it. Uh, so, but I, I put in four because it's just a matter of how many people can I afford to have go up the Seacoast Highway for the training in any given moment. Mm -hmm. So, back to that part of the question is also you got four sets of boots at $2,200. They're kind of pricey, aren't they? Yes, they are. Oh, yeah. And so is the jacket. Yes, okay. they are. Thank you. Okay. Are we ready for the vote on training 35,174? In favor? Thank you. Madam Chair, move support services, please. 743048. $743,048 to the Budget Committee's final review process. And I will second that. Okay. And Mr. LaBranche seconds. Regular wages, part time special officer wages, summer coverage, overtime, court wages, uniforms, telephone, medical service, radio maintenance, etc. Okay, questions for the Chief? Ma'am, if I might. Go, go out of order a little bit here. I can probably offer a little information that might go for it. Stop some of the questions because I did a couple of things in this area that I knew would probably great yeah. gain, gain attention. Uh, one of the areas uh, you see is the part-time special officer wages, and then the summer coverage full-time officers. Right. Tradi uh, historically, we had always had that part-time uh, part officer wages line. <laughs> but I believe it was Selectman Nichols a uh, few years back, wanted to see a breakout of how much of that was being covered by full-time officers, which created that second line. Looking at the historicals, what I found is we would always run significantly under um, on the part-time officer line, and we would always go over on the full-time uh, coverage line. So I just took some money from one and put it in the other, yep. and I did it based on historicals and, and that's how I came up with that. So that's why you see those numbers somewhat different uh, from previous years. The other item that I added was we talked about um, the outside detail issue, and I believe we talked about uh, the fire folks being paid out of Fund 26. Mm -hmm. Earlier in the year, we had that incident when uh, Officer Masakis was surrounded by a hostile right. crowd. And it caused a lot of things. We were moving forward in a very contentious time with politics, and I still think we're kind of involved in that now. I had to make some decisions. Uh, consulted with the, the state police. The state police is in the same issue we have. I mean, they're having trouble with recruitment and retention. And I don't think it's any surprise. We, we send guys to training on how to lead the new employees coming in. The folks coming in, the millennials, they don't take as much work as we used to. I mean, you look at folks like Mr. Henderson and myself, we work a lot. They don't work those number of hours anymore. They just don't. We actually have a class on it called Managing the Generational Divide. Wow. And that's one of the things. They do not, the quality of work is up there, but the number of hours they want to work is much less than a, gen, a few generations before. So that has added to part of the problem of trying to get enough officers to work the, the work that we need to work. So the old standby was, I'll call in more troopers. Mm -hmm. And they have the money. It's they're up against the same problem we all are in law enforcement. We're in a very transitional stage across this country. Mm -hmm. Recall back in the late '80s and early '90s, there was a lot of grant money that brought a lot of officers into the, into the uh, street crime acts mm -hmm. and all that. Brought a lot of officers in, but you're seeing them coming to the end of their career cycles, and they're being replaced by people that just don't work as many hours. So battling that, I had to make a decision. So one of the things I did was uh, talk to a number of these agencies that we have mutual aid with, uh, primarily the U University of New Hampshire and the towns that uh, are part of our Seacoast Emergency Response Team. We have working relationships with them. Mm -hmm. 
And I made the decision that the work that I felt was necessary, particularly on the weekends, that our officers couldn't fulfill, and I couldn't get the adequate support from the state police or the sheriffs, that I would put those out to these outside agencies. Now, we paid for that out of the Fund 26, similar to what the fire department did, but it is, uh, the manager said, you don't want to dip too far down into that. That was a stop, stop gap way of trying to fund that. I believe it should be in the budget, so I did request a sum of thirty thousand uh, dollars be put in the budget to cover um, that type of expense, so we can get experienced officers in there to assist us. My intentions um, are to begin this program as early as the warm weather hits. If we start getting warm weather in April, my, my intention is to start augmenting my staff, first through my own people, and then if I can't get enough officers within in the house, then I have to resort to bringing in officers from the outside to have proper safety at the beach. So those are the three big areas I thought I might experience some questions on. There may be others, but those are the ones I thought I might experience some uh, interest in. Okay, questions for the chief on this section? Sunny, and then uh, yeah, okay. at the beach, you're providing the, the, the police. Are you billing the states for making the arrests? What? There would be no mechanism to do that. No, oh, you're covering the beach. It's state property. It's in the town of Hampton. It doesn't matter if it's state, privately owned. It's under the, the jurisdiction of the Hampton Police Department. And that's our responsibility. So you can't bill. It'd be like going to a restaurant and they have a problem with a patron. We wind up arresting and sending them a bill for that. That's not something we can legally do. There's no mechanism for that. Okay, Steve. If in fact um, state police gets their budget restored and everything, would we go back to the way it was for the last 30 years, bringing them in to uh, fill in for us? I mean, we all know the work that they do. They bring in the cruisers. They know the area. So we bring them back, and then that maybe would reduce the uh, summer coverage budget? It's not their budget. Their budget was fine. Um, they were actually looking for an increase in their budget. The true problem was with the coverage areas that they had, <coughs> they didn't have, I remember some weekends that we'd have a one or even no troopers come down because they were tied up in other places. Mm -hmm. And again, they're experiencing the same thing we are. The workforce has changed. The people coming in are different. They have a different mindset about what they want to do. So having counting on the state police in this time frame right now is just not something I can count on. I have to have that as my stopgap. Um, I will certainly be speaking with a new colonel. Obviously, I, I have a very close re relationship with a prior colonel, uh, working as he worked down here in Troop A and coordinating uh, our efforts to the best financial benefit of the taxpayer. But it was just one of those things. It was uh, a difficult spring, and I wasn't going to stand by idly and hope I could get more troopers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on the nights they expect they're going to be sending people to us, and they have to withdraw them because something else has happened somewhere else. Yeah. And yeah. I have to have a, a fallback plan to that. It is bringing in these outside agencies. Certainly, if I can get it, if I can get support from the state yeah. that's not coming out of our directly out of our funding, that's what I would opt for. But. I couldn't do it, so that's why I went to this. See, because I'm looking at the taxpayer side of it on that on that aspect. I mean, first of all, we all know. I mean, you got the state beach, state park, mm -hmm. all that state property. Mm -hmm. We should get something in return. <laughs> and the fact that really in the really last more. 30 to 40 years, you know, they've come down, they've handled it out of their own detail account, doesn't affect us. And I understand, yep. you know, what the hardship and things you went through this summer and the way it was done was done quite well. But I still, I just think that state police presence down there stands out by itself. I mean, they know the area. They, you know, you, catch them, you clean them with a the rest and things like that. And uh, I just think it was a great program and hopefully we can get that restored in the I'm future. Ho I'm hoping that things progress in this country. I mean, again, this is not a Hampton issue alone. Yeah. Recruitment for law enforcement is in a dramatic spiral down. Yeah. If you read any of the trade journals on law enforcement, they'll tell you that recruitment is just so difficult right now. When you look at the city of Dallas and what they went through, what they didn't report was two months prior to that, 40 officers just decided to resign and retire because they, they had had enough. Yeah. Um, so as they go through these things, um, that's what we're faced with. Uh, certainly, uh, the relationship with the state police is strong, and if I could get them to, if I get somebody else to pay for it, I would. But in this circumstance, if things come back during my tenure as chief to where we can get that, Certainly, 
I would reduce the expenditure to the taxpayer. Has a new colonel been appointed to Yes, yet? Chris Wagner, uh, outstanding. Okay. We've he's worked the state police details for many years, and we've had a good relationship. He was one of the heads of the tactical yeah. team of the state police, which I'm the head of the CERT team, yeah. uh, president of the CERT board, so we've always worked well together, and Chris is an outstanding Bob Quinn got kicked upstairs. He got kicked upstairs. Mr. LaBranch? Um, <clears throat> at a recent meeting with the state, uh, Captain uh, Patrick Murphy was uh, the wife guys, yeah. parents, had an incident reports for this past summer and one of them was uh, I believe it was 1700 arrest for uh, alcohol on the beach no there weren't arrests be very clear okay they, they don't have arrest powers they are not law enforcement okay very they, clear so they, they are public safety but they are not law enforcement okay but he I <coughs> check. he mentioned it and so it kind of stuck in my mind. So, because I thought 1,700, my God, that's. that's I'm surprised. Talking. I gotta be honest, Steve. I'm surprised it was that low of a number. Those are the contacts they made with people that they documented that were in violation of either, and those are vi uh, primarily park rules, not law. Okay. Yeah. We don't enforce park laws, right, park administrative uh, rules right now. Yeah. Although we've talked about it, what we enforce are town ordinances, which is open containers of alcohol. Right or state law, which is, generally speaking, minors in the possession of alcohol. Mm -hmm. So we have to enforce those uh, because we're charged with that in the town of Hampton. Um, certainly I can bring in other assets under mutual aid under my authority as chief of police. I can invite the state police and other agencies to assist us. But the lifeguards right now do not have that kind of authority. I don't anticipate they have a will. Okay. So just to clarify, so, yeah. so 1,700 isn't the number. Because I know that you are involved mm -hmm. yeah. with your vehicles and you do have some arrest with, yeah. but it's what kind of a number would you throw out there? Would it? Uh, I'll give that to you right now. I just gave my quarterly update to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I believe so for the quarter, which was July to September, we made. Physical custody arrests, we made 619 arrests in those three months, which is a 32% increase from the previous year uh, of 468. Of the 619, <laughs> 131 were on state property. Now that's all through the town, that can be anywhere from the, the liquor stores yeah. to the beach, but I think we all know primarily it's the beach where we're making the arrest with the when alcohol you, offenses. Think about it, it's, we're talking about 90 days and 131 arrests, that's more than one a day, so. And I gotta be honest, it could be much higher. We've, we've, yeah. we've had to adopt different tactics. Mm -hmm. The old, when I first came to Hampton PD and I grew up on the beach, anybody had an open can can of beer, they got walked up. That was the way it was. Everybody goes, okay? We can't operate that way no, uh, with the number of officers we have, and we also have we, we look at things differently now. You have to look from a risk management perspective. When you bring somebody into custody of the police department, and we're talking about the minor of minor offenses being an open container of beer. And let's, you know, a 25 year old person just happens to have a can of beer and you bring them into the PD. Well, we bring some other people in that aren't as nice and they want it for more serious things. If that person somehow engages and winds up getting hurt at the hands of somebody that was in there for a serious felony, the town of Hampton is going to pay a lot of dollars. Yeah. So the circumstances are now that when an officer encounters alcohol violations on the beach, anybody under 21, we have to take them into custody. We don't have a choice. They have to come into custody. That's the law. When they're over 21 and their conduct is such that we have no other concerns other than the alcohol, they're not being disorderly, they're not impaired, they're not causing a scene, we now give the officers much more discretion on how to handle that. I don't mandate they put them in handcuffs. I want action taken. I want it addressed. I want the alcohol emptied and removed from the beach. We've entered into an agreement with the state park that the Hampton Police Department now has the authority to trespass mm -hmm. anybody from the park for any violation of ordinance or their administrative rules. I can tell them, you've got to leave. You can't come back for 24 hours. I've entered it. We've entered into that agreement, and that's been working fine. We tell them, we don't write a summons. We don't arrest them. Pack your stuff. You've got to leave. Most times, if we don't arrest them, we write them a hand summons. Must must appear uh, summons to the, the uh, Tenth Circuit Court. Instead of bringing them into custody, because the minute you bring them into custody, your insurance companies will tell you, but it's a risk management special tell you, 
just going through the roof. So if we can avoid it and still provide the public safety aspect and send the message. So after the issue we had with Officer Masakis, mm -hmm. the next couple of days we organized teams, we went down, and we announced over PA systems, if you have alcohol, remove it now. If you are found with alcohol, you are subject to arrest. Yes. And we still made a dozen arrests each and day. And I remember day. the day that you did that. It was and it's just like, it started it, it, at one end of each and we weren't looking to make a lot of arrests. We were just trying to send the message right. where people and still foolish did. enough to do it. And you did. So we do have to look at things differently now. It, it's a different time, and we, you know, the people expect a, a kinder, general group of police officers handling things that don't necessarily have to be arrests. And, and we really try to look at those hard. Thank you very you much. But add, the arrest could be much more. We can add to your message that if we have to arrest you, we won't feed you. Yeah, we got no money in the budget for that. <laughs> we got a hundred dollars. Buy a lot of bread with that. Yeah, water and bread. Everybody comes with this bottle. motion. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. yes. on, on seven. Yes. I actually have a budget question, if you don't mind. Oh, oh a budget ahead. question. Jim, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Outside agencies uh, in last year's budget was zero. Correct. Mm -hmm. Actual spending this year. Was zero. Yeah. In the budget. Yeah. In the budget, yes. We spent twenty six. I told you this. But we spent how much money from the police detail fund for this? I want to say roughly a twenty thousand dollars, I think is the number. We were somewhere in the vicinity of twenty thousand, I believe. Mm -hmm. well, twenty thousand dollars, if it was in the budget for twenty thousand dollars, we'd be looking at a fifty percent increase. From twenty thousand to thirty thousand. The math is much better than mine. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Max, can you confirm that? <laughs> okay, we all said we're No, ahead. we're not. Well, move on here. Move on. So, uh, I, I don't understand. Uh, I'm not comfortable with them. I'm not quite sure exactly what verb I, I should I think use. I get, the, I get the answer for it. No, no. Chief, you and I talked on the phone about this. Not this part, we didn't. Yeah, we did. <laughs> citizen okay. citizen oh, to police not chief. That. Not budget committee member to police chief, which is what I'm doing now. All right? What I heard you say earlier was that you paid for this exercise of outside agencies. Um, well, because it's not mutual aid, you have to pay them a detail fund, I guess. But in any case, you paid for it using the detail fund money last year. Correct. And you're not going to do it next year because the town manager doesn't think you know, you want to cut that deep into that fund, right? So, no. Okay, correct me then. I just did. <laughs> well, why are you putting it into the budget this year versus using the fund? Because my belief is it belongs in the budget. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. That's my belief. And it, it should be ongoing, right? That wasn't the manager's idea. That was my idea. Yeah. Okay. So you owe the manager an apology, and I expect to hear that you did that. Chief, I you hereby know. apologize. For not but understanding not your characterization. <laughs> okay. Trust me, he's watching. I don't think so. He's chief, you're what you're. He's, he's on duty 24 7, just like you, Chief. He gets a car too, doesn't he? You as a senior, how could that possibly be true, Tim? Chief, what you're saying is from now, this, should, this needs to be identified as an ongoing expense. Yeah, and I would expect, as, as, as Steve pointed out, if the time comes where we can get back to what how we used to operate with the state providing some of this, I could reduce the number. But I want to be comfortable. And the reason it's, it's 30, because we did not talk about this, sir, is the reason it's 30 as opposed to the 20 is I'm going to start this earlier than I started last year. I didn't start doing this until July 4th, right around July 4th, June. I'm starting this the minute we get the warm weather, so I'm anticipating April. That's why I put 10,000 more in, just to be safe. You opened up the door for him. So that was the calculation uh, to increase 50 percent was just to be safe. Yeah. 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 Number, yeah. All right. Thank you. I felt okay. 10,000 for those two months was probably, and I, my feeling is this: having worked there for the number of years I have, that we are extremely taxed early in the year because our officers aren't ready yet. Right. They're not working the regular right. schedule. Mm -hmm. So that's why I add that because I anticipate that if I'm coming out in April. I'm going to be hitting that April and May if the weather's good. So you're going to be safe at 30,000, yeah. is what you're saying. You're going to feel safe. So I that was safe. the phrase you used. I do 20. You said you feel safe at 30,000? Tim, okay. Said? I don't want to mischaracterize it. Okay. Tim. Would you feel safer at 40,000? <laughs> what would you feel what safer What was the question? 
Wait a minute. Okay. Well, no, I'm talking about your calculation okay. and how you came to thirty thousand dollars. All right. Do not interrupt me further, please. No, that's it. I'm asking how he came to thirty thousand dollars and why it couldn't be forty thousand dollars. Give him a hundred thousand and get it over with. Fine, if that's what he wants to say, let him say it. He did say what he wants. He didn't say it. Easy. It's here. And please Steve cheat. has a question. I can talk now. <laughs> I wish you would, rather than anybody else. I don't get that a lot, but thank you. Um, <laughs> the 20000 again, that we spent began towards the end of June. <coughs> so we utilized that program for maybe a week, 10 days in June, month of July, about halfway through August, and as normal, it starts to fade off as kids go back to school and all that. My plan <coughs> is, weather depending, this could kick in as early as April. Mm -hmm. now, April and May are very busy months for us, and we're very short-handed because our part-time staff doesn't work, doesn't really start until the middle of June. And their availability, keep in mind, most of these people have other jobs or are students. So I anticipate, granted it's just anticipation in, in ballparking it, that that extra $10,000 is going to cover that period for me. That's what it was. That was I'm my just wondering, based on, on, on when you were talking about expanding the calendar, mm -hmm. which is almost a double of the calendar, why the number ought not be 40 instead of 30. It could be. I was trying to be conservative. I thought you'd like. I'm trying to be accurate. Yeah. It's hard to be accurate in my business. Yeah, it's hard to be accurate in a lot of things, but we have to make our best effort. Don't we? That's what that reflects. Okay, Mr. Henderson has a question. I'll be very brief. Preseason, just to clarify, is the worst time of the year prior to the summer schedule starting. We've had so many points, and I was involved in many of them over the years, where at the point of riot, so um, some bad, bad days. So preseason is real bad. So the help is, is certainly needed. Um, my question, real briefly, is what was the average that we paid for the uh, dollar amount that we paid? For the outside agencies? The outside you know, agencies. I don't have an answer to that, but I can probably get it before your, your okay. end meeting. That's a good question. I, didn't, I should have looked at that because we had a variety of, you know, UNH, Epping, Expo yeah. was coming over quite a bit. Um, let me see if I can dig that up. That would be interesting information for me, too. Just to see how that 30000 fits. Yep. with what we're paying out for details. No, that's a good question. Let me, uh, let me get back to you on that. Good. That's the only question I have right now. Okay, you ready for the vote? The amount for the support services, 743048. In favor? No, 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 no. Oh, I like that. Special details is zero. <laughs> Moving on to police station and building. We have a total of... Madam Chair, I move police station and buildings for one hundred eighty-seven thousand and twenty-nine dollars, and not one penny less. Right, Jane? And I will second that. I second it, Mr. Chief. Chief, you have heating fuel. I'm assuming that's gas. Yes, it is. Okay. I have a question about the electric. A question about what? The electric. The electric. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. You notice on uh, the uh, mm. uh, line number. Uh, right there. 4100 you have budgeted 69 the actual is 36 and you're requesting 62 that's twice as much as what the actual is for nine months my question is why is that so high and okay why, why was it so high before i guess is even a better question well, keep in mind, my actual in 15 was 58,000. Yeah. Rates haven't gone down. We haven't made any serious adjustments to any of our uh, operating issues within the building that would reduce the usage. Mm -hmm. So I would say that 62 is a modest increase compared to the 58. It's actually a reduction from the budget of 16. It's a 10% reduction. I have no problem with that except your usage. Not, the year to date is 36,297, which is. And that was as of September. And we, got whole, we got a whole quarter to go, and I believe you use a little bit more energy. Do you have electric power. heat? Huh? Do you have electric heat? No, I don't have electric heat, but I just, uh, obviously it gets darker. So we're we'll putting lights on more, yeah. and I think that's going to, yeah. are you trying to, are you trying to thank me for walking around that building like you <coughs> every day, turning off lights? I don't think. That's it, what I do. I don't think it come across my mind at all, but I, now that you mention it, I will mention it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, now back to this. I can't see spending as much in the last three months as we spent in the first nine months. And that's what we're saying with this budget well, request. We can flag that for Christy to help us when we sit down to do the final re review. You want me to make an arrow to that for next yeah. to the... Uh, we don't have gasoline on this page. No. 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 
<laughs> they don't use. But keep in mind, we started this process in July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I started putting these numbers together, I hate to say this, the last ones I really worry about are those numbers simply because they're fixed by what the rates are. Yeah. So I really don't take a hard look at those until about now. Yeah. I appreciate that because yeah. I know that after, as an afterthought, we didn't build the building to be a fit, energy efficient at all. It's probably the worst building in town as far as the energy. Well, we station. did what was called value engineering, which translated means let's do this as cheap as we can because right. we wound up doing things that we would never do again if we built a building. Nothing that we do, do. Nothing we do in yeah. do in town now okay. was being utilized in those days. We didn't care. You're right. Yeah. Are we all set with our bottom line? Are you ready for the yeah. vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, One eighty-seven thousand oh two nine. In favor? Thank you. And Christy, could you just check on that electric for us for the police stations for our review? Okay. While you're checking that, Christy, I'd like to have a, a, a detailed understanding of what took place with the police detail fund in 2016. Income and expenses, please. We'll do animal control. Yeah. Animal control. We might as well do it right now. Oh, yeah, for the year when we, when we do the final uh, the topic, when we come up to the final on the police, it's going to be uh, round tab on the, the detail fund will be topical once again. Oh, I got it. Okay. Okay. All right, if you're interested.